beloved in Christ, good morning. Let us begin this morning service as we invoke God's presence in a call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is found and bound firmly together. To these tribes go up and the tribes of the Lord as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper because you love them. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Let us begin our service as we sing together hymn number 267 in Tosa, in Mimi Yetawa the last verse Vian Makola, Vian Zimwe, Bongani Kosin Kulu, Pofiko Fairs of Windinos Pele. Ni pumle kwa nani peso. Generous God, of your great goodness, 
You have given your people the vision and skill to present to you this house of prayer. We always ask you to bless this chapel. Here may the gospel of Jesus Christ be proclaimed and made known in service and in fellowship. Here may the sacraments be celebrated with joy and reverence, and your people nurtured and strengthened in faith. Let their hope and love be given abundantly by you, O Lord. Here may the seeker find faith. May the weak find courage. May the grieving find comfort especially in these days. Here may those who want to see your word evangelized beyond this place give generously and with joy their gifts, their talents, their time, their money, and all that they wish to render to you for the extension of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, hear us when we pray to you in this chapel. May it be place of peace, to all who enter, a fortress against all hatred, envy and pride, and a beacon to all who seek your presence. We pray to you all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray and said, Our Lord's Prayer. our scripture, first scripture reading in the book of Moses, second book of Moses, the Exodus, chapter 4, we read verses 1 to 5. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the, by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hands. This said the Lord, is so that they may believe 
that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. We sing together as you do me such a close of whom we are.
Our second scripture reading we will get from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9, we read verses 21 to 24. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9, verses 21 to verse 24. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has it been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, Everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. This is the gospel of Jesus. May the Lord bless it forever. We sing together the call. We are all to commit to the Apostles' Creed. The call of the Lord is the Lord. The
Canon for today, the text is found in the Gospel of Mark 9, verse 24. And the words are, Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed and said, I do believe. Help me to overcome my unbelief. Beloved members of the well family of prayer, as we have said before, that uh, when the time comes and God will, we will be exploring the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. It is important that we do so because it always enriches our faith to understand sometimes the liturgies that we as the church we use when we worship God. But before I start with the first article which will be a series of 12 sermons, I thought it is right for today to introduce these 12 articles of the Accord by firstly give a preface to this very important liturgy. And this preface I would like firstly so that we can all be together that we start by giving the historical background to the Apostles' Creed. It is only when we understand the context from which the Apostles' Creed, as we have it today, historically where it came from. The first established creed, as we will know, it was the Nicene Creed by the Ecumenical Church in 325 AD and the Apostles' Creed came a little bit later. The Apostles' Creed is the outcome of Christian teachings handed down from St. Peter's Sermon of Acts 2 after the great day of Pentecost. Because we remember that day after Pentecost, St. Paul, St. Peter, he preached a sermon and over 3,000 people, the Bible says, were converted on that day. The Apostles' Creed, therefore, occurs also in a letter written in 390 AD from a Synod of Milan, which was a belief widely accepted in the 4th century. While not fully verified, but there is a view that each of the apostles, 12 of them, contributed an article to these 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. According to a systematic theologian, his name is Kelly, when he writes in his book, The Creeds, 101 and 102, he says, the Apostles' Creed comes from the Old Roman Creed. And the title, Apostles' Creed, is mentioned by Bishop Ambrose, also at about 390, 390 AD. It gained acceptance in France and Germany, officially recognized by Charlemagne, in the Frankish Empire in the 9th century. And it was incorporated into liturgy by the Church of Rome. This is important so that we can understand that the Apostles' Creed, it is a liturgy that has always been, soon after 
the ascension of Jesus Christ and the establishment of the early church. What is it for the Christian? The Apostles' Creed is the statement of Christian faith that articulates the basics which forms the foundation of the Christian church. Some may call it, it is the rule of faith or the rule of truth. The early fathers at that time and the saints taught it as this rule of faith because they believed that it forms the basics of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In a nutshell, the Apostles' Creed is seen as the basis of all systematic theology to those who have sought to understand the four important theologies that form part of our Christianity. It is in the Apostles' Creed that we get to understand what theologically is called the Christology. And Christology is the study of the person of Christ. Because Christ, as we know, was both God and also human. It is in the Apostles' Creed that we get to understand what is called theologically the soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation. It is in the Apostles' Creed that we get to understand what is called ecclesiology, which is the doctrine of the church, the laos, the coming together of the people of God. It also finishes off as we sing it and we get to understand it. It finishes off with the doctrine of eschatology, which is the doctrine of last things. So this creed is a very important theological foundation for all those who call in the name of Jesus. It is about God. It is about Jesus. It is about the church. In a nutshell, it is the summary of the gospel of Jesus. If anyone wants to understand what is the mission of the church, it's deeply rooted in the deep understanding of the Apostles' Creed. Therefore, as we begin this series of these 12 articles, it is important to note that when, when we recite or we sing the Apostles' Creed, we start with the words, I believe. And it is those words that form the foundation of all the 12 articles that we'll be dealing with. We note that this beginning, this preface is saying, I believe. It doesn't say, we believe. Because the Apostles' Creed, it talks to each and every individual who have accepted Christ as his or her personal Savior. Because it is a confession that we make every time we come before the throne of glory, every time we come before God to worship God, it is important that we stand before Him and we humble ourselves before God as we make this personal confession. It is important so that when we stand before God and before we worship Him, we need to assure ourselves of the confession that we make to God. We need to say to God, we believe you God. We believe a very important starting point. 
Because if we do not believe, it will be just a waste of our time and maybe we will not be honest to our own worship. In order for us to be taken serious by God, we have to assure ourselves before God and assure God that we believe in this Trinitarian persons. Therefore, what therefore is the meaning of this word belief? This word means that I accept something that it is true without having any proof. In other words, when we say we believe to God, we say we accept God, even though we have not seen God by our naked eye. But because of our conviction, and because we have been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, we come before God and say to Him, we believe that you are the God of our life. When Peter and John in Acts chapter 4 verse 4 when they preached to the crowds it was interesting the Bible says the crowds responded by saying oh yes indeed we believe. It is for that reason that in Acts chapter 8 verse 37 the story of the Ethiopian eunuch when he was reading the book of Isaiah, when he could not understand the meaning of that book, he came before Philip and said to Philip, help me to understand the scriptures. But the question from Philip was, do you believe? And yes indeed, this Ethiopian eunuch said to Philip, yes I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And therefore Philip said, Yes, are you ready to be baptized? And he said, Here is the water, and here am I. What is this that stops me from being baptized in the Holy Church? In the Bible, this word appears 90 times in the John's Gospel and it appears about 40 times in the Acts of the Apostles. It is the foundation of what we believe that it is the journey that we want to, to take with God. We have to believe like this eunuch of Ethiopia that yes indeed Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In the New Testament Greek this word believe is referred to as the pistel. And when you say that word the pistel, you mean that you are convinced of something that has happened to your life. You are convinced that somebody before you were there. He created you in his own image and gave you the, the joy of being in his likeness. And this person is nobody else but our living God. When you say, I believe, you give credence to something that has happened to your life. Because you come to understand that you cannot live this life without believing the owner of the world. Therefore, I want to join me as I say, I am convinced, as it happened over 2,000 years ago, that even today, Jesus Christ, I know, and I believe that he died on the cross, and he rose on the third day. When you sing the Apostles' Creed, you make that confession. That as Christ gave his life and gave it for us more than 2,000 years ago, personally I still believe that is my personal Savior. Therefore, when you stand before God and say, I believe, 
You are saying I accept that it is right for my life to be deposited into Jesus. When you say they believe, you say it is correct and appropriate that the truth of my faith is based on the fact that I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Christ died for me. And I want to acknowledge that all the days of my life. When you say I believe, you say substitutionary. Jesus, instead of us, died on the cross so that we can have everlasting life. You said, you say when you believe, you give thanks to God that Christ, He died so that He takes my place. Because the amount of my iniquities. When you say, I believe, you say, Jesus took the punishment that I was supposed to have endured. But he died undeservedly for the sake of my sins. Therefore, this word believe, this pistol, it means more than anything. I trust in Jesus. Because when you say I believe, you say I've got nobody else to trust for me to navigate the days of my life. You say when you say I believe, you say Christ saved me. He saved me not because of my good life. Jesus saved me not because I attend the church regularly. Jesus saved me not because once I was baptized. Jesus saved me. Not because I'm always present at the Eucharist. Jesus saved me when you say I believe. Because you trust in him and trust in him only. When we do that individually and trust in Jesus, I want to assure you that God satisfied, gets satisfied. When God is satisfied with us, God comes closer and nearer to us. When God is satisfied with us, God surrounds us with the abundance of his love. When God is satisfied with us, God gives us freely his grace so that we cannot live life without being in the hands of God. But as I go to the conclusion, let me lift up three things and three lessons that we get from this word, the pistol, the word I believe. There are three lessons, my dear members of this family, we must always carry with us as we begin to sing this Apostles' Creed. When you say, I believe, the first thing you must always realize is that not everybody in this world actually believes in God. Some, they don't believe in God and you never see them in the church. But those, they are the reason for us that we go out there like the old apostles and preach the saving grace of Jesus so that even them, they can believe in God. But what more importantly, and what is more worrying is for those who come to the church but they come for other things. Because when you look the way they conduct themselves, they do not believe why they might be in the church. Anyone who does not believe in God as we say when we start the Apostles' Creed, they are not different from those who are called the atheists. And the atheist is a person who disbelieves or a person who lets believe in the existence of God. But the Bible says, wow well to those who don't believe in God. Because in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 14 to 15, the Bible says, when you are the one who believes in Jesus, do not be bound together with the unbeliever. Your job is to preach 
and preach the gospel of Jesus to that one until that person accepts Jesus. You do not want to be in partnership as a righteous person of God with those who believe in lawlessness. The duty of the believer is to make those who are far from the grace of God to believe in the saving grace of Jesus. You cannot as a believer have a fellowship with someone who don't believe because light cannot be put together with the darkness. It is the duty of those who live in light to help those who are still in darkness so that those in darkness can accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The Bible says what harmony can Christ ever have with the burial and the burial is the devil. Jesus can never have harmony with the devil. It was for that reason even on the mountain when the devil tried everything it could to win Jesus over. Jesus had to tell him that it is not only by bread that human being lives. Those who call in the name of Jesus they cannot be in harmony with those who don't believe. The duty of the believer is to preach the gospel of salvation so that those who don't accept Jesus they can because of our testimony and because of our witness of our lives they can also accept Jesus because a believer cannot have anything in common with an unbeliever you must be different from those who don't believe so that you can be part of the evangelical zeal to go out to the world and preach to those who don't accept Jesus. You cannot recite the Apostles' Creed and then when you leave, you come and be in a common space with those who don't believe. The duty of the believer is therefore to preach the gospel, the gospel of Jesus, so that all those who don't believe in Jesus. They can be made to also come into the fold through the experience of our, of our witness and our evangelization. If anyone in this world does not believe, tell that person that that person is like a pilot with no flight management system. It's like this pilot who takes off and get into the skies. And yet that pilot has got no clue of the flight management system. Because when the pilot flies, the pilot does not depend only on the skies. The pilot depends on the traffic control system that is on the ground. As we seek to fly into life, and fly and fly into life. But you are in danger if you are not connected with the traffic controller of the heavens, that one called Jesus. If you don't believe, you are like a captain of the ship who's got no rudder, who cannot navigate the weather and can find themselves in deep trouble of waters. Those who don't believe they are like a train driver who gets on the train but cannot understand the meaning of signs. The signal is the way that shows the train driver that there is a danger ahead. Because if you can ignore the signals, you will be danger to your life. Believe in Jesus so that you don't crash in life. Believe in Jesus so that you can avoid the rocks of life. So that you can avoid the storms of life. Believe in Jesus. So that you don't get into collusion. In life when you are living the life. When you are knowing that you believe in Jesus. So when we begin to sing. Or to recite the Apostles Creed. 
it is important to understand that we, we confess before God that we believe in God. And the second thing, and the second lesson about this word belief, we say when we sing this Apostles' Creed, we believe in God. I want you to know that there is a difference between belief in God and believe God. Those people who say in belief, they believe in God. They are different to those people who say Diakora in God. There's a difference between believing in God and believe God. Those who believe in God, they can use that statement as the beginning of their journey to God. Those who say, I believe in God, they can be part of the generic people who say, anybody can say, I believe in God. Those who say, I believe in God, they may be saying that, not experiencing internally the saving grace of Jesus. Those who say, I believe in God, they can be just making a recitation and singing like all other people. Those who say, I believe in God, they may be saying that with no deeper meaning as to what that really means. They may be saying because it is the routine when you come to worship. They can be singing every day and every Sunday. But there's something different when someone says, I believe God. The question therefore would be, what is this that you say? Do you believe in God? Or do you believe God? So that you can be able to understand this, I give you therefore the third lesson. And that third lesson is to say, starts with believing in God and journey with that belief in God. But ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to deepen that, that you don't only believe in God, but tell him the third lesson. Say that you believe God. In order for you to enjoy the salvation of life, it is only when not only believing in God, but also believe God. Those who want to be saved to the uttermost are those who say, I don't only believe in God, but I believe God. I believe Jesus, that he is the source of my life. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not only to say, I believe in God. But it is. When you sing that creed, you must sing with the mind that says, yes, as much as I say I believe in God, but I want to experience the trust that I invested in God by saying I believe God. I want you to know the difference between believing in God and believe God. Will deepen our relationship with God. That is the most important thing. When we sing this creed, we must not just stop at believing in God. We must, we must deeply request that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, He deepens that belief in God so that you can be able to say, I believe God. It is because what God is, is who he is. God does not change. God of yesterday is the God of today. God of yesterday is the God of tomorrow. When God says, I am God, he is God all the time. Believe God when he says that. When you say, I believe God, it means that you know that God can do what God says he can do. When God says to you, I will take and put on my bosom and be with you as you walk in this life, 
believe that God can never change. When you say I believe God, you say I believe the presence of this God. You say I believe the omnipotence. You say I believe the omnipresence. You say I believe that God is God and God will never change. He will always be God. Don't only say I believe in God, but say and what, what the Bible teaches that we must believe God. We believe God that God can do all things through Christ. Then you say you believe God, you must know that God's word must be alive in our lives. It is only when we inherit the Bible and make the Bible to be part of our lives that you are able to enjoy the everlasting relationship with God. Believing God is more than just knowing. He is real. It is reading the Bible every day and begin to live according to the prescripts of the Bible. Those who believe God, they live within the injunctions of the Bible. Their life is surrounded by nothing else but the command of Jesus. Therefore, why do we start by believing in God? But where are we are going? We are going to the state and to the realm that says, I believe God. To believe God, my brothers and sisters, is accepting what God says about our sin. Believe that God is holy and is the Holy One. There is no one like Him. He is the God, the God the Adonai. He is God, the God the Elohim. He is God, the God the Jehovah Jireh. He is God yesterday. He is God today. Therefore it is important that you pray to God as you sing this creed. That God deepens believing in Him so that you live in believing God. When you say I believe God, you rely on the fact that God will forgive us. God is able even to cleanse us to be ready to be in His and only in His hands. When you say, I believe God, is to work and work hard so that you can live a new way. Those who believe God, their lives changes from the yesterday and to the today that is better. When you say, I believe God, as the 2 Corinthians chapter 5 Verse 17 says, This I do, I say, so that I can become a new creation. It is for that reason, therefore, in the text that we gave, when this man saw his son being healed by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ asked him, Do you believe? And he exclaimed and said, I believe. In you, Christ. I believe Christ because Christ has saved my son. You can also say, I believe you, God. I believe you, Christ, because you are able to save even my life. To believe God is to face the challenges that are before us with faith. When you believe God, is to trust Christ that will help me to overcome all that is before me. When you say, I believe God, you are saying, I let the word of God to be the compass of my life. When you say, I believe God, you invite God in your life and allow God to come in and give the fruits that will be ready, make you ready to live the life. Believe God, so that when you believe God, you can move on from the past. That has held you as a hostage and move on to the new beginning, to the new life, and be able to say, It is not only that I believe in God, it is because I believe God. Believe God is how we can face the future with faith because we believe that God says what He says and God will deliver to us what He wants to deliver. 
It is for that reason, therefore, in Psalm 112, verses 6 to 7, the Bible says, those who believe God, they are like the righteous who will never be shaken. Those who believe God, they will be remembered forever, even if they depart this world. Those who believe God, they will have no fear of bad news. Because people, these days when we are living, in this time of this coronavirus, people are shaken, people are worried about hearing bad news. But those who believe in God, they doesn't matter, because they are not scared of the bad news. Because they believe to the one who is the owner of the good news. Believe in God so that it doesn't matter when you meet the bad news. You can overcome the bad news with the good news because you believe God not only in, in God. When you believe God, you will have no fear of any bad news in life. When you believe in God, your heart will remain steadfast. When you believe in God, you trust not only to anyone else, but you deposit your life and live in God. I want therefore to say as I conclude, if you are going to be understanding the coming lessons about the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed, you must start not only by reciting that I believe in God, but you must start by saying, I believe God. When I believe God, all things are possible. When I believe God, I know that my life is safe in this world. When I believe God, I've got no other one to believe in, but to trust only and obey God. Let this be the beginning that will ready ourselves for the coming teachings of the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. We stand now before God and submit ourselves as we say to God. Before we can recite the 12 articles of the Apostles, let us start by saying, we don't only believe in God. We begin by saying, while we may be saying believe in God, but we believe God, that God will make our understanding and deepen our faith in Him. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, we pray for all the people of the world and the leaders of all nations that is this time of our lives that you give to all the inhabitants of your world that you love so much. The unity, peace and concord through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church in the universe to be under your divine care, led by the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, so that all those who profess your name and all those who don't only believe in you but believe you that they worship you in spirit and in truth bound in unity peace and all righteousness we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord, we pray that you illuminate all the leaders of your church, the bishops, the presbyters, the evangelists, the deacons, and all those who have a covenant with you to proclaim your gospel. And all those who are in a covenantal relationship, even though they may not know. That with true knowledge and understanding of your word, and both by their preaching and living the word of God, they may set it forth and be good examples in your church and the world. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for all your people, especially as we live today. We ask you, Lord, to comfort those who are going through emotional challenges and help all those who are weak. Strengthen them, Lord, as they believe you. Raise up all those who may be fallen. Help all those in danger. Help all those in trials and tribulations. Help all those who have been infected and affected by this coronavirus. We pray for the fatherless children. Some of them, they've lost their their mothers and their fathers, their dear ones and their loved ones. We pray for the widows. We pray for the orphans. We pray for all those who are desolate and oppressed. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the women who are abused in many ways. It is truly disheartening to hear that the numbers are growing of the cruelty that come to our women and children at the time when we are supposed to be together. At the time when we are supposed to be embracing and deepening our love for each other. At the time when we are supposed to be in unity with one another. At the time when we are supposed to stand before the Holy Cross and be united by your blood. But there are still those who find it in their hearts to abuse the vulnerable, the women and the children. We pray for those women and their families. We pray for the children who are vulnerable. We pray, Lord, for all the sick. We ask you, Lord, to show them your caring love and have mercy upon all those who are in need. We pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Therefore, God, go before us in all that we do with your most gracious favor and guide us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you we may glorify your holy name. And finally, Lord, by your mercy may you obtain your everlasting life. Prepare our hearts as we are about to continue in this service of wanting to deepen our understanding of the Apostles' Creed, which is our statement of faith and our prayer of confession. We ask you, Lord, to continue to journey with us so that we can grow in knowing you as we deepen our understanding of the summary of our faith as we are going to be listening to you speaking to us and through us about what does it mean to believe you. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have our closing hymn.